Hey everyone, welcome back to Garden State Growing. My name is Eric and today's video is all going to be about trellising. So I'm going to show you some trellising options that they do have at Home Depot. So we'll start off real easy. In my hand I have an old baluster that I bought to do my deck. Uh, and you can take this and just pop it in the ground and do some ties up to it whether you want to use twine or whether you want to use rubber bands or an elastic strap uh, there's many different options this is probably the simplest one just in the pot or in the ground and tie up as the plant grows but there are limitations this is only a couple feet tall so if you're going to have a plant that's going to grow more than three or four feet tall uh, this is not going to work out for you okay so then we have option number two. Now these are really nice. Uh, they do have a metal core, so they if you bend it, it'll stay bent, uh, but it does have a plastic coating, which means they will last. These were about three and a half bucks at four feet. Again, limited uh, to your plant size. These are perfect for like peppers, eggplants, um, whatever else you would like to trellis up uh except for of course like beans and stuff like that which you need like a fencing trellis uh so these are nice limitations but they do come in up to i believe eight foot sections uh but they're at like seven bucks by the time you get at that i would rather use one of these uh one by halves that i have or two by halves that i have and just cut a section that was the appropriate height for my plant and use that and I just trellis it up for less than a dollar I didn't have to spend seven dollars seven dollars is not much but when you're talking 30 plants now you're talking two hundred and ten dollars you know that's not good and then the one option I did see at Home Depot that I don't know it perked my curiosity at, at the very least was this spiral one now if it works the way it's designed to work and I'll, I'll, I'll see I'm gonna use this on one of my uh, tomato plants that I'm gonna put in a container uh, all you do is pop it in the ground and then as the plant grows you give it a spin and the plant winds up the spirals eh, that's pretty neat again this was I believe three and a half bucks it's a lot if you're doing multiple plants, but if you're only doing like three, four, or five plants, and it's kind of decorative, it's kind of it's kind of neat, it's kind of nice. So that's a good option. But you know, you got to know me by now if you've been following me on my channel. I don't do anything small, and I am one of the most optimistic people on the planet. So as you can see behind me, I have this gigantic trellising monstrosity that's gone up, and I love it. Now I had video on how I built this, how I put it together and planted my tomatoes in and trellising them up. But I went to back up my phone videos to my computer today and instead of backing them up, it erased them all. But the good news is I have an entire another bed to do today. And hopefully today I got a day off. I know it's like rainy and crummy out right now, but it says I see blue skies and it says that it's supposed to get nice out today. The sun's supposed to come out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reshoot the video for you guys, just for you guys, because it's a lot quicker if I don't shoot. I'm going to reshoot the video. I'm going to take you through the whole process of making that one that I did over there. I'm going to run the lines. I'm going to tell you why I did it the way I did it. But there's that other 10% that you get to look at it and you say, oh, what would I do in this scenario? Oh, he didn't explain that. Oh, okay. So I am going to bring you along today and I'm going to keep the video running and I'll just butcher cut it at the end to shorten it down. Hey guys, so the first thing I'm going to do is I measured out my bed and it came out to 159 and a half inches. So what I want to do is I want to set up my first top post at the top of the bed. Bring this board back because I'm going to double these up. And matter of fact, I'm going to triple them up. I don't know how well you can see, but right where that splice is right there, it's starting to bow down a little bit. And I don't like that. I think that would be totally fine. Worst comes to worst, I can always go up there and brace that. I'm not going to have an issue. 
Uh, but with the one I'm going to do now, I'm going to change that up. I'm going to triple it up and I'll show you. And for this, I'm going to be using the two and a half inch coated deck screw. Now, before I go and I put this board on top, I want to mark off an inch and a half. What that's going to do, let's see if I can find a scrap. When I go to put up the lateral braces, it's going to sit like that and I'll have a better area to screw and to screw. So that's why an inch and a half there, I'm going to start at. So I'm going to put the longer board on top and a half inch mark. So let me do this and then I'll come back and I'll show you the final product. All right, guys, as you can see, I did the main top beam. That's going to be that beam running right there. Uh, but I'm going to do something different. As you can see, I left it an inch and a half on each side. So this way I could butt another board right up into it. This will be my uh, vertical board. This is my horizontal top. And as you can see, there's two splices here. And I made sure I put the long one here. And then the short one here, and then just the opposite, the short one, and then the long one. And this way, these splices didn't end up right in the middle on top of each other, which would have been terrible and defeated the entire purpose. Uh, but because that other one has that sag, what I'm going to do, here's the one piece of wood I cut off of the one board, and it spans just past both of those seams this is going to add a little bit of additional support to the top of the beam and it doesn't have to be the full length i just want it where the seams are so the seams uh don't let go a little bit so let me do that and then we'll move on all right so i'm just going to divide these in half i'm going to mark them all now just to make my life easier and i'm just going to go off of the one that i already did all right, so I have my mark for 181 and a quarter. And then what I'm going to do is I got my plant spaced out, my tomato plant spaced out every 18 inches. Every 18 inches, I'm going to put a mark. And then I know to put a baluster there. Hey, Mr. Tree, I love you. You're kind of in my way. If you do find your wood splitting, if it's too small or your screws are too big, just pre-drill with a small drill about half the size of the diameter of the screw and uh, and then you won't have any problems with wood splitting. So let me do all So now here comes the fun part. It wasn't that hard the other day. Oh, splinter. The other day when I did it. Oh yeah! That's what I'm talking about. Woohoo! Okay. So now the next step is I have to put these little eye hooks the reason why i pre-drill in the hole is not to worry about splitting the wood it's basically just to make these tiny little eye hooks go in a lot easier uh, it gives me a starting point to get it started by hand i'm gonna have to move that out of the way and then you can either just take a screwdriver which see don't fall. Seems to be the easiest method to do. All right. You know what? I'm going to put them this way. There you go. And I'm just going to do that on each end of the balusters. And this is going to give me somewhere to put my hooks for my trellising ropes. Is a trellising hook? Well, Actually, it's just the S hook and I took my pair of pliers and bent this down I'll show you that and this is gonna hook into here like this and it all makes sense once I get this thing up All right, so I just brought this over here uh, it's going to be my next staging area. What I need to do now is I need to make these vertical beams that are going to go up and down. So let me measure them out again and find out my exact height. All right. I'm going to 
of nice if I had a battery in my gun. should be good and then I do have this little scrap piece of wood sitting around so I might as well use it instead of just throwing it away or throwing it into one of the beds to decompose I'm gonna throw it on the side it's not gonna look the prettiest I could like go buy brackets for money but uh, no I'm done with spending all money on stupid stuff you don't need when you can just use what you have laying around that would have been waste otherwise. I need to add another, actually two little eye hooks. The upper one I'm gonna put in now because uh, it's difficult to do it once it's all the way up. Okay, I'm gonna go put this over by the other one. I'm gonna make another one and then I'll bring you over when I put it all together and show you what I'm gonna to do to get it to get raised up. Now all I have to do is attach the vertical bores to the horizontal bores. Now this is the part that is a little tough to do with one person, but I'm not gonna bother my family right now. I mean, putting this one together is so much faster than when I did, when I did the first one because uh, I didn't know what I was doing with the first one. I had just had plans in my head and I rolled with it, but now I know where I made my mistakes. I get to skip them this time with learning experience. 40 inches wide, it looks like. So my middle mark is gonna be at 20. And I have these little half inch machine screws. They are supposed to be self tapping, but they didn't want to self tap with this metal bed. So I just pre drill it. These are just gutter brackets. This is what you use to use your rain gutters from your house to secure that. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put an additional two holes. Hey guys, I'm gonna go do the other, same to the other side and then it's gonna be time to hoist this up. I'm gonna have to find somebody to help me. Now, just like we did, I have with that one, you're just gonna grab this end and then we're gonna start to slowly lift it up till it's straight up and down. And this piece of wood is in those brackets. You see that? Can't stop it. Alright. Hold on. Put it down for a second. Alright, you ready to try again? Mm -hmm. Alright, get it. You know what? Oh my god. You know what? 
I'm just putting these uh, eye hooks down lower. I put the ones up higher and I hook the string up to it before we lifted it up. And this is just going to be a diagonal bracing to help the lateral forces. Ah. Throw them while you watch them. What's that? Throw them as fast while you watch them. Oh, yeah. messing with them so I'm happy. You know, they might have been going after bugs and stuff too. The damp weather and of course the thing is like underneath plastic. Yep. Worms are in there, everybody's there. Everything else is in there. That might have been, oh uh, yeah, I don't know, it got me scared. Beautiful out here again, huh? Yeah. Janice enjoyed your uh, videos. Oh, she's been watching them? Yeah, she's got two Oh, nice. I love it. So now there's just one more thing that I need to do and that is to put up the stabilizer braces just like I did over there on that bed. So let me cut some pieces of wood. Now, as far as the construction of this monstrosity, that is done. Now, all that's left to do is hang my trellis lines, and then once that's done, we're gonna get tomatoes in the ground today. Finally. All right, guys, now all that's left to do is to run the trellising lines up to the top of the trellis. Uh, so what I did was, you saw I put the eye hooks up there earlier. So I have these little S hooks, but they're not exactly what I need. So I have to modify them a little bit. So all I did is I'm taking my pliers and ugh, now I have one closed end, one open end. This end to hook, this end for the string. Cinch the knot down. And now what I've done is I've gone and made myself a really good slip knot so I can take this knot and I could move it up and I could move it down and make it longer okay so there we have it so now when I put this hook up there 
I can adjust this string however I want by moving this knot. So let me get my little hand helper thing and my ladder out and I'm gonna hook these up. And then at the end, I'm gonna to explain to you why I built this so tall. Cause my wife came out and she tried to put it up. She couldn't put it up and she goes, I don't understand why you're trying to make it so big in the first place. Blah, 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 blah. And I went, honey, I've got my reasons. I'm gonna explain it to all you at home. Okay, and if she doesn't watch this video, she'll never know. She'll, well, she'll know eventually when we get the tomatoes in the ground. So, let me get all these strings up and we'll be done with it, okay? Show you this knot, this slip knot that I use. Um, it helps if you have somewhere to anchor your little hook. So I'm just using the top of my ladder, and then this way I can pull it out like this and show you a different. So I'm going to take my finger. I got the short one on my right, the long one on my left. I'm going to take my finger and put it down below, in between the two strings. And then I'm just going to take this one under my finger go around the back over my finger and keep on going around about five times so I have about five loops so that's three four five okay now you want to take the short one and go through the same hole same direction I'm sorry that this middle string is going down so they both end up on the same side of the loop so now they're both on the same side of the loop and then all you have to do is find the right string and pull it tight and cinch it down. And there you go. You've got yourself a perfect little slip knot. When people at work keep on going, geez, Eric, how come you keep on getting hurt? This is how I get hurt. Folks at home, don't do this. This is about as sketchy as it gets. Use a real ladder do it right then I'm gonna measure all the way down to the bottom of this bed here because I want this extra string because I'm gonna bury this string into the ground when I plant my tomatoes all right everyone I've got the strings posted up to the top on the hooks I have them adjustable that took me a lot longer than I thought it was gonna take uh, if you're wondering what type of string I'm using I'm using 550 paracord uh, a lot of you people might say, well, that's a little overkill for what I'm doing. Well, yeah, it is kind of. But I found if I used uh, masonry twine or even the twine that they sell at Home Depot that's designed, it's just not strong enough and it winds up cutting into the plant. And then also by the end of the season, you have to throw it away because after being out in the weather all summer, uh, it degrades to the point where it's just done. This, I could actually even, I could leave it up all winter or I could take it down, bring it inside and not have to let it winter. But this is, like I said, 550, which means it can hold 550 pounds. These plants are not that heavy, but I wanted something strong here and I wanted something that was gonna last. All the strings are up. I'm gonna stop this video for here because uh, it's going to be just way too long if I include planting the tomatoes. But don't worry, for the rest of this day, I am gonna plant the tomatoes. I am gonna keep on recording. I'm just gonna divide this up into two completely separate videos. Uh, one is gonna be just building the trellis. The other one's gonna be planting the tomatoes. Uh, this way, I'll be able to give you a lot more information on planting tomatoes and bring you along and show you all the curve balls that I get when I am putting those tomato plants in the ground. And I think it's gonna be a better video for that. Let me tell you, why I did it so tall and why I have these slip knots on here and why I have those hooks on top. Now, the tomatoes that I'm putting in here are indeterminate tomatoes, opposed to determinate tomatoes. Determinate tomatoes, and I'll say it again for people who are just tuning into this video for the first time, uh, determinate tomatoes are genetically grown to, or de disposition to grow only to a certain height, usually around anywhere between four to six feet if you have a really great determinate tomato. 
Uh, these are going to be the indeterminate tomatoes that I'm going to put in here, and they have the potential, and I'm going to say potential, to grow 10 feet tall or plus. And it's that or plus that I'm talking about with this trellising system right here. Okay? Because after, let me show you these plants over here. These are tomatoes that I already put into the ground and I already trellised up. Now there's two ways of doing this. You could stake it in the bottom or you could bury the rope. Uh, bury the rope. I'll show you that when I plant my tomatoes. But I want you to see how these go all the way up to a hook. I find this one just a little loose, so I'm going to tighten it up a little bit. See, that's why I got that slip knot. All right. And after these grow all the way up to the 10 feet height that they're going to be at, I've run out of room to grow my tomatoes. Now, I can grow these plus 10 feet if I treat them right. So what I can do is I can go to the top here. I can remove that hook that this plant is on and move it over to that hook, which is spaced out 18 inches, and I can gain a couple extra feet. So I just turned a 10 foot plant into a 12 foot plant. And then as it grows and it reaches its limit over there, I can move it over to the next hook. And I just gave myself another two feet. So I turned a 12 foot plant into a 14 foot plant. And I could do that with all of these around the outside. I can't do it necessarily with the ones in the middle uh, because they have nowhere to spiral. But the ones on the outside, I can take it and I can spiral them around this entire trellis here and potentially get a 20 something foot tomato plant. Now, I've never attempted this before, so I don't know if this is gonna work. And I'm gonna be honest, this is not my idea to bump it from one trellis to the next and move it over, over, over and spiral it around. It was another YouTuber that I had watched a while ago and I was gonna give him credit except for the fact, I was gonna be like, yo, go check out this dude's channel, which I love doing to other gardeners, okay? Uh, but the reality is I found so many laws in his personal system that's why it completely changed up my system i feel for me it's better uh i didn't like and uh it also seemed like he was trying to push a product a little too hard and i i don't want to bad mouth another gardener especially if they're getting sponsorships and they're making money i mean ultimately in the end, that is one of my goals is to start bringing in an income that could supplement what I put into this garden uh, and help, you know, get that negative balance up. But I don't want to bad mouth him in his system. So if you find that video on your own, go right ahead. You can check it out. Uh, you know, he had he includes a lot of extra pieces that you have to buy um, that I resolved with a simple little slip knot here. And I just didn't think it was necessary to spend that extra uh, revenue on, on on these clampy things uh, that he put at the top, you know, that uh, just didn't seem logical to me. It seemed like a waste of money. So this is how I'm gonna do it. If you want to try to grow 10 foot tall plants, you can stake them up with a big piece of wood and tie it to that big piece of wood or you could try a trellising system right here that's going to spiral it around the trellis as they grow and you might get it you know you, you never know what you're gonna get so i'm gonna end the video here i hope you enjoyed it i hope you enjoyed watching me build this trellis it only took me a couple hours to do uh it wasn't that difficult to be honest with you if you're a handy person you've got a drill gun and a screw gun and and a small little saw it's not that big of a problem. I think in total it cost me around $40, including the string, the hooks, the wood, and everything to do this trellis, which is, to me, that's a bargain compared to a lot of the stuff I'm trying to sell you out there. And I'm able to get 27 plants in a 3 by 13 foot bed. And that's pretty amazing. So on this next video that I'm going to show, I'm going to show you actually getting the plants into the ground, which I'm going to do later on today, but I have to take a pause because today is my son Tyler's 21st birthday and he's stuck with us here at home because he can't go to the bar. Ha <laughs> ha, coronavirus. All right, so say happy birthday to my son Tyler. I love him. He's the best. And uh, if you enjoyed this, if you learned a little something, if you want to try this out or some of the other trellising techniques that I'm going to bring you along for, 
be my guest. Let me know how it turns out. Leave a comment down below. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that post notification bell. Share this with as many friends and families as you can. I am at 95 subscribers, or actually this morning it was 96 sub subscribers. I'm looking to get 100, so instead of putting that long link of jibber jabble uh, and copying and pasting that, I could just have Garden State Growing YouTube. So I love you. Peace, and I'll see you on the next episode. Bye.